Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 27th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com. We're going to be going over a hand from a $10,000 buy-in tournament I played quite a while ago on PokerStars. As you see, we get aces, and aces are a very good hand to get, particularly in a $10,000 buy-in tournament. We have a limper, and whenever you're this deep stacked, you really just need to raise. You don't really want to be limping with too many hands in this spot, and particularly with your value hands, you just want to raise and... What's going to happen is the limper is going to call a lot of the time, which is obviously a good thing. So we do raise. Jay can be calls on the button, which doesn't really mean too much. He probably has some sort of hand, like 9-8 suited, ace-jack, you know, king-queen, pocket three, something like that. And I expect the initial limper to call as well, which he does. So the flop comes 3-3-4, three, three, and at this point when this guy leads out into us, I think his range is going to be very tilted towards either draws or overpairs. And the overpairs are obviously going to be weak overpairs um, because he limped pre-flop. If he does have something like pocket fours, it's going to get pretty dicey. <laughs> but really, that's the only hand we lose to in this spot is like pocket fours and pocket threes, and both those are very unlikely. So right here, I think we need to raise, and we're raising purely to try to get value out of the overpairs and also to charge the draws. So this is one of the spots where raising really doesn't have too many downsides. So I do make it a thousand, and he calls. The turn's the ace, and he leads into us again. And at this point, I mean, we clearly have the nuts, so we're not worrying about losing. We just have to figure out if our opponent actually has a strong hand here, or if he is sort of just trying to figure out where he's at in the hand. And I think more often than not, he's just going to be trying to figure out where he's at with something like pocket sixes, and he's probably drawing, like, dead. Anytime your opponent's drawing very dead, you always need to consider if they'll put a lot of money in the pot with their hand that they're drawing dead with. So if he has pocket fours, obviously he's going to put in a lot of money. Um, if he has like ace three, which is really unlikely because I have an ace, he's probably going to put in a lot of money. But if he has something like pocket sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, fives, twos, any of those hands, he's not going to be willing to put in very much money. So this is a spot where I think we have to slow play, even though I'm not really a fan of slow playing in general. But in this spot, because we did turn the ace... Our opponent's probably drawing stone dead, but he's looking at his hand, and it's probably not that good. If instead, say we, instead of aces, we had, like, pocket sixes, and the turn was a six, that would be a spot where I should, would go for a raise, because then, even though my opponent has two outs, I'm not really concerned about the two outs. I'm more so concerned about getting a lot of money in when they do have pocket eights or nines or tens. So, um, right here, I just don't think that he's going to be willing to invest too much more money. So right here, we need to try to make our hand look as weak as possible, and also, you know, if our opponent does have something like pocket eights, he may peel that eight and then go broke. So don't deny your opponent the opportunity to go broke. We get a pretty bad river here because now if our opponent's sitting here with like any pair, he's going to have a hard time paying off any bet whatsoever. So in this spot, I think we need to go for a large bet. And the reason I like a large bet is because if I think, I think if he has something like pocket sixes or pocket eights, he's going to fold pretty much no matter what we bet unless we bet like a thousand chips or something. But if he does have a four, I'm sorry, if he has a pocket fours or a three, or if he happens to randomly have a flush here, he's probably going to pay off a very big bet. So in this situation, I definitely think a large bet is the play. So hopefully I make a large bet. And I do make a large bet. I, make, uh, I bet 5,900. And like I said, this is a bet purely to try to get value out of his monster range, which I don't think is very large. But you have to realize that the rest of his range is all going to be made up of very weak hands, and those weak hands just aren't really going to pay you off. And in spots like this, you have to figure out how often they're going to call a big bet versus call a little bet. And um, say he has a monster here, like a three or pocket fours or a flush. Say he has that, I don't know, 20% of the time, and then the other 80% of the time he has something like pocket, you know, a weak pair that he may call the 1,000 chip bet with. It's, if you run, run a little bit of math, you're going to find that it's much more profitable just to try to get full value out of the, the monster hand. So that is exactly what I do here. So that's going to be that for this episode. We're going to uh, take a look at uh, the hand from my opponent's point of view in part two. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.